Katie Pertit with Katie Pertit Designs. And I wanted to bring to you today some different techniques with my new stamps and dies that I designed for 49 and Market in Sussex. And um, in the initial video, when I was showing my collection, I didn't open the package fully. So I'm gonna go through everything, show you what's in the package when you buy it, and then a few different ways to use the stamps. They're not the only ways you can use the stamps. Um, there is no right or wrong way. They are just um, some of my favorite techniques with the stamps. So I'm gonna be showing techniques, not necessarily finished projects. So again, we're gonna, today we're gonna do um, the painted pencil butterfly. So if you want these from your retailer, that's the one you wanna look for. And you can't really see from the packaging what all you are getting inside. So let's open this up and you get two dies. You get the large butterfly and the small butterfly. We're not gonna use the dies today. We're gonna just focus on the stamps. But the dies um, are a great option and the things that I'm showing can easily be die cut out. All right, so then we have our stamps. So you have your, I'm gonna turn over this way, there we go. Have your pencil line designs, which are on top. Then you have your solid butterflies below, and then you have some partially painted and a splash. So the concept with the partially painted is, let's say you wanna vary your colors a little bit, you would paint a lighter color with your bottom stamp and then come in with an accent color with your partially painted stamp. And then over the top, you would add your pencil line stamp to add the accents and ink it up. And you can do these on a platform too, so you can reapply your top stamp, but that is not what I'm gonna be showing today. So I'm gonna just show the techniques I use on a couple of different tags. And um, let's just get started, right? Okay, I'm gonna start with the smaller one. So I'm actually, for this one, oh, these are stuck good. Um, I'm actually gonna just use the solid stamp and the pencil line to start, okay? So I'm gonna put my solid stamp on here and I haven't um, conditioned these at all. So uh, I don't think I'll have an issue, but we will see. Then I'm taking my spritzer. I just use um, a bottle spritzer. I'll link it, I got it from Amazon. I'll link it in below. So I just spritz my stamp a little, make it a little wet. And then I'm going to start with some watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons. I'm gonna dip them into the water. Now I'm using the, what is it? The Caron Darsh, um, but any watercolor crayons will work. So if you've got like Tim Holtz crayons, go for it, use those. Um, these are just what are in my stash and what I like to use. So I'm kind of, using it as a painting. And I always keep <laughs> paper towel close by because like this one, I got it a little too wet. So I'm just gonna dab it off. No harm in that. And because I used a light blue, now I wanna add some shading. So it doesn't have to be magically colored because the water is going to help it all blend together. And then, you know what, for the outer wings, I think I'm gonna go with a green. Dip it in the water and then color it on here. You can really, you know, get quite carried away and do all kinds of things. But to get started today, I'm just going to do this. Okay, once I get them wet, I don't put them back in my jar because I don't want them to contaminate everything else, even though they're already contaminated, but. Okay, I'm going to turn this over and just stamp it. You can see the ink 
hopefully that's still on the camera, you can see the ink kind of spread. And I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna dab it off. The other thing that I usually do, and of course I did not set it up beforehand, is probably not the most ideal system, but it's what works for me. I just always keep a paper towel that I spritz. And you could use a rag if you wanna you know, run it through the wash or whatever, but this is what conveniently works for me in my studio. I don't have water in my studio. So that's how I handle it. Okay, so my stamp is still wet. So I'm gonna take my heat and... are just simple tags that I picked up at my local Michaels. So they're nothing special. They're not like hot press watercolor or anything like that. Um, okay, now once I have my painted butterfly, then I'm going to come in here and grab my pencil line butterfly and put that on my stamp pad. I'm gonna dry it off because when you spritz it, it gets kind of wet. Because for the finishing, um, you don't need, you don't want it to be wet. So I'm using the archival ink so that if I decide to go in later, it won't smear that. I'm just going to ink it up. And then come in over my tag and we're eyeballing here. So, you know, human error, but we'll see how close I can get it. Put it down, press and lift up. Wow, pretty, right? So it's really watery. It's really um, artsy looking by doing it that way. But now we're gonna try it with a partial ink. Okay, so I'm actually gonna leave these off to the side. So we're gonna go in with, wow, they're so hard to pull off of here. So it's this one here that I'm taking. It's the partially painted butterfly. And I'm gonna position that on my acrylic block. So it's there. Now I'm gonna just lightly, hopefully not as wet as I got it last time, lightly spritz it. All right, and now think about what color do I wanna do this one? Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna go with more of a teal. So I'm just gonna go in, oops, I didn't get that one wet first. You don't have to get it wet, especially when your ink or when your um, stamp is already wet. I wanna be sure that I've got the bit of ant antlers, antenna that is there colored. And I want it to fade down in color. So I am gonna go back to this blue. Let's see if I can get it to fade nicely from the teal into a blue. All right, and I'm gonna position that below. Okay, hopefully that'll work. That looks about centered. Push it down, you see how the ink spread and filled it all in. Again, pull it up. Got some puddled ink there, but that can leave some really nice effects if you like those kind, which I do. So I'm gonna leave that there and just get my heat gun and dry this one up too.
I got some extra dribble in there, but that's okay. You know, just run with it. There are no mistakes. There's only happy exploration. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go for this splash now and try to add a little bit on top and see what we get. Don't really have a plan. I'm just um, playing, experimenting, seeing where everything takes me. We're gonna go back and pull the green back in. I didn't get it wet because my stamp is pretty wet to begin with from spritzing it. So I'm just gonna rub that on there. Just to have a little dimension in my color, I'm gonna grab another green, kind of add that in too. Maybe that one needs to be wet. No, I'm not really seeing much of a difference there. So let me grab a darker green and see what we do. Get that one a little wet. There we go, there's some darker. Just want some variation in the color. Slide these over a little bit, make room. Okay, now I'm just going to hope and pray and layer this over the bottom here. Okay, so what I'm doing is just adding splash, adding some creative artistry to it to mix it up a little bit and see where I can take it. And again, I will have to dry. that's all dry. Again, I'm going to come back in with my pencil line and peel off the splashes, bring back the pencil line, ink it up with my archival inks. And see what we've got. All right. You know, you really don't have to line up perfectly when you're that artsy underneath. But see how different that butterfly looks from the first one? It's so fun, it's so artsy. And it helps you, by using the stamps like this, it helps you keep your splashes where you want them. So it's like controlled mess, right? So I'm really, really liking that. I like the mix of colors, um, really freestyle. It, looks, it doesn't look like manufactured or um, rigid. It looks creative and using the stamps like this really allows you to bring your own colors into your project and your own personality into the project too. And like I said, this is just one example of how these work and things that you can do. So I'm gonna handle the top one a little different. I'm going to ink it up with my archival ink first, and that's gonna allow me to paint over it without losing the integrity of the stamp. Okay, so I'm just kind of position, I kind of want like a stack of three I have a thing about liking to work in threes, in decorating, in projects, in product design. It's like three, five, seven little hangups. Okay, so I've got just a plain butterfly now. So now what I can do is go in with my crayon. I'm gonna dip it a little and I'm gonna go in and just kind of paint the areas. So I'm just gonna go with some of the sections that I like to be blue. And because usually in nature, maybe you don't find butterflies in these colors, but their designs are generally pretty symmetrical. And they're the same on one side of the wings 
and then different on the other. All right, so now I'm gonna use um, a watercolor brush, dip that in the water and come in and paint it some more. So in some ways you can use these like color by numbers, but it helps you refine your own personal artistry. Maybe you don't see yourself as a watercolor artist or able to paint, but when you start like this, it makes it so much easier for anybody to be able to do this. So let's see, I'm gonna go in with some other colors. I'm gonna bring in like a teal to kind of darken it a little bit. Just bring some accents. Oops, it needs to be a little bit more wet. The fun thing about watercolor crayons is how you can go back in and add more water and you can lighten them, you can add other colors. When I was in college, watercolor was like my thing. I always thought I'd go to grad school and study watercolor and that was gonna be my thing, but it wasn't. But here I am decades later and this is what I most like to do. So in a lot of ways, I've kind of come full circle And I went to school to be a biomedical illustrator, which I dropped out of that program after the first year and just went to graphic design. But in some ways, I mean, I'm in no way a scientific illustrator, but I still do enjoy illustrating nature and working with images from nature. All right, so adding the green, oh, that looks nice. It picked up some of the teal, like a happy accident there. And again, just a little bit more water, spread it out. Nice, I like that, okay. Now we need to do the butterflies um, bodice. So I'm gonna go, instead of like going with a black or something, I'm gonna go with a dark blue. It's actually, this might, it says indigo blue, but it kind of looks a little purple. So we'll see. You know what, I don't want that. I don't want it to be purple. I want it to be more navy. So what do I have here? Uh, Prussian blue, that might be better. Let's see. Yep, that's better. That's more what I wanted. And you don't really need a lot because when you add the water to it, it really spreads quickly and goes far. So, and if it's got too much, take your brush, dab it on your paper towel so that it soaks up the water, and then come in here and draw down and it's gonna soak up the paint and dab that off on your paper towel and come back in and soak up more. And there we go. Okay, so that was just a quick little technique exploration for using these stamps, not the dies yet. We'll come back and do other projects with the dies. But just so you understand what you're getting in the package, you're getting all these layers of stamps and then the pencil lines and a variety of different things that you can do with these. And I have lots more to share, but this should just get you started. So thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please ask them below. I always do my best to come back and answer questions and I will link up the supplies I have used below. All right, thanks everyone. See you again real soon.